thing is we, we're using two words that um, don't always go together, but we're going to check out a little bit about how they intersect. So um, this is the definition that we use for, for cosplay. It's that portmanteau of costume and play. And then we've got the makerspace definition. Um, now, of course, depending on who you talk to about makerspaces, you will get very different definitions. Oh, I forgot to ask people. Um, I know some people recognize, but do you know what Mary and I are dressed as right now? Rick and Ralph. So I'm Wreck it Ralph. I'm going to rack it. And Mary? Does anybody know Ninja Turtles? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm April O'Neil from the 2012 Ninja Turtles, not the one that most oh, the people the recorder. Are. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but could we just share a couple of observations in terms of similarities or differences that you noticed? Things like passion or purpose, mm -hmm. um, uh, planning and design, like designing and planning and sketching, uh, all the design phase um, of that. Um, engineering, there's a, a whole engineering component, and also community. Both of those, both of those things sort of have a community aspect. Of awesome. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, Amiga, in the point of view of differences, one is a world of make believe, and the other one is more of a mashup. I'm Mary. I'm 17, and I've been cosplaying probably for the past seven years. I first have to do a bit of thinking. I have to decide who I want to be. Um, and then like look at what that character looks like, how they dress, and then I have to de decide how am I going to like create that costume. So um, a few years back, uh, I had a big inquiry unit with my students about what constitutes a hero, what makes a hero. And our culminating task for our, uh, our media literacy unit was that they were to create their own superhero costumes. Um, and so they had um, guidelines, because um, I, I still didn't have to do it for marking. And they had um, uh, prompts so that they could think about it, as well as these blank bodies that they could uh, sketch on. Um, so uh, this is a sample of the students in action working on their superhero costumes. Now, unlike, say, traditional cosplay, where you are actually trying to be like Shell or to be like Anna from Frozen, um, we asked that they did not copy a superhero because we wanted to see what they would come up with. They marked each other as well. So they um, looked at their costumes. This bag man. <laughs> But the nice thing is that wasn't part of the, it wasn't how well you created it, it was about the thought that you put behind it, um, the significance of um, the, the choices that they made, right? Like not everybody can afford to buy materials from the craft stores or from wherever to create these costumes. What I love about the cosplay experience and about just making in general is that mistakes are part of learning. So I got really into finger knitting. This was actually supposed to start off as a hat, it, <laughs> and it was like, no, it's not working as a hat. So I made a skirt. There are some issues, though, that we do need to address when it comes to cosplay, that there are some um, challenges as well, too. Mary's going to talk about one of those challenges. Basically, what if the character you want to cosplay isn't the same sex as you? What if you like, you know, a male superhero like Cable, but you're a girl? Um, and some people look down on people who want to cosplay, you know, male characters as a woman or female characters as a man, because I've seen it go both ways. You can crossplay. It's an actual term. Uh, you can adjust the costume so that it fits you better, or you can, you know, or you can like leave it as is and just wear it because you like it. My makerspace at my school is a very open-ended, you do what you want. And it wasn't necessarily focused on clothing. But what I noticed is that that's what children oftentimes ended up doing. The materials are out. Occasionally, I will. what happens I find is I'll show one kid one thing, and then all of a sudden it just spreads. But that's by their choice. But because of this, I decided for my media lessons, because I have to teach too, that we would do a whole clothing unit about where do our clothes come from, so getting out that, that equity piece. So they are right in the middle of this, actually. They are starting, they've, they've taken trips to Value Village, our thrift stores there in Toronto, and uh, they have chosen what method they'd like to do to hack.
their clothing to alter it. And um, we sent notes home to the parents. We do want parent involvement. We don't want them to take over. This is what we've been doing so far. We've been exploring how to make different things. So they've made duct tape bow ties. They've made uh, sandals and flip flops out of cardboard. Um, and it's been a fantastic experience so far. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.